John 5, 24 is my favorite verse in the whole Bible. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, uh, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and uh, shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. No word of baptism there, but it gives us the clear, hey, if you believe, you have everlasting life. You have eternal life. You will not be condemned. In the future, you shall not be condemned. You're not going to go to hell. You've already passed from death unto life. Past, present, future, you're saved. Done. Sealed. Amen. Amen. But those that want to try to teach that baptism is required for salvation, they may turn to a passage like Mark 16. Which again, just on that, that other side note of, uh, of the modern scriptures, so-called, the, the modern perversion of the Bible, they'll tell you that basically almost the entire last the entire last portion of the book of Mark just shouldn't even be there. That is not reliable. But then they're going to turn to this passage to try to prove uh, that you need to be baptized, right? It's, uh, it, it, they pick and choose. When is it convenient to have this as part of the Bible? When is it not? But look at verse number 15. Powerful passage. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Amen. Okay, that's a very true verse, a very true statement. The problem is that people want to butcher this and change this into meaning something that it doesn't when it's simply a true statement. And part of this has to do with just understanding logic and reasoning and just understanding how things make sense and just kind of using reasoning to understand what this says and what it does not say. Now, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Is that a true statement? Yes. Yes. Does this say you must be baptized to be saved? It does not say that. It just says he, a person, that believeth and is baptized. Well, wait, I'm, I believe and I'm baptized. So I'm saved, right? Yes, I'm saved. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Here's the logic part of this. If you have a true statement, because elsewhere in the Bible you have, he that believeth shall be saved. Yeah. As I just quoted from John chapter 5, verse 24. Amen. And many verses where it's just believe. The believing is what saved. You could add anything after that, and it's still a true statement, and it's not misleading, and I'll get to that in just a second. It's not misleading at all when you just read this. Hey, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes and goes to church shall be saved. He that believes and prays to God shall be saved. He that believes and stands on their head shall be saved. Because he that believes shall be saved. You could add anything to that. The problem comes in is when you start trusting that, no, you must, I must believe in my baptism to save me. That's a problem. Because how does the, the rest of this verse go? But he that believeth not shall be damned. No mention of baptism on the damned part. People are either saved or damned. Okay? So even within the context of this one verse, well, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So what does that mean for the person that believes and is not baptized? Are they damned? Well, no, because he that believeth not shall be damned. So he does believe. So he can't be damned. The verse answers it itself. He that believeth, and you say, well, well I'm not baptized, but I believe, you're still saved, because we can point to many, many other passages that prove that also clearly as well.